Welcome to uh, building a continuous employment pipeline from scratch. We are going to uh, get going here. We have, uh, there's about five slides or something like that. I'm going to go through them real fast. Um, and then uh, the rest of it's all going to be demo. So here we are. I'm Nan, by the way. That's me. Okay. Um, continuous deployment. Um, how many people here are doing continuous deployment? All right. Sweet. I always wonder why people who are doing continuous deployment come to this talk. But hey, that's cool. Um, so this, uh, uh, when I talk about continuous deployment, I'm talking about enabling the continuous delivery of value to customers. Okay, so this is, uh, this is what we're doing. And um, secondly, it also means committing to production uh, with no manual interventions. So you commit your code and it goes through some sort of pipeline and goes into production. There's no manual steps along the way. Is that what you guys think about when you think about continuous deployment? Okay. All right, so that's what, that's what we're going to be doing today. And um, one of the uh, real prime things that you need in order to do continuous deployment is consistency. And so uh, number one in all that is version all the things. So everything that you have, all your uh, source code, your um, deployment scripts, your artifacts, everything has to be versioned. If it's not versioned, you can't have repeatable builds. You need to have repeatable builds in order to do this. Simplicity, you want to be able to check out your code and run it. If you have to go through like a week long process to get an environment ready, it's not going to work. Okay, you need to be able to just get your code, run it, whatever environment setup needs to happen, uh, infrastructure setup, all that kind of stuff just has to happen um, with a simple checkout. If you can do it from the command line, it's the best. If you have to click through GUI, GUI stuff to do deployments and uh, wizards and all that kind of stuff, it's not going to work probably. It's going to be very difficult. You need to be able to do things from the command line. Most continuous integration tools will let you do, um, actually I don't know if there's any that, that won't let you do command line um, runs. So uh, simplicity and command line. Uh, continuous integration is a prerequisite. Um, we're gonna for our, uh, for this demo, we're gonna use Jenkins, and uh, you know I, I'm I'm a Mac. It's as simple as just installing brew install Jenkins, um, and then starting it. For an artifact repository, we're in this demo we're gonna use uh, Nexus, which is um, a place where you can just store version artifacts. So with the things that you build, again on the Mac, it's just brew install Nexus and then start. Um, for our deployment environment. Um, we're going to use here Pivotal Cloud Foundry, and there's just a local version. I obviously normally you would not be deploying onto your local machine, um, but I don't like to depend on networks during talks. So um, we're going to be deploying to a local uh, instance of Pivotal Cloud Foundry. Um, this is the product. You just install it, CF Dev Start, and you're up and running. Um, and then, okay, so cool. So that's it. Those are all the, those are all the uh, slides that we're going to do for right now. All right, so. The first thing we have here is um, this is just the uh, project that I'm going to be dealing with, and this is just a simple Spring Boot application. Um, uh, and the way you start it is like this: just Cradle Boot Run, so it will start up. It's a really, really cool application. Um, just wait till you see it. Okay. Here it comes. Look at that. You go to this endpoint and it gives you this cool JSON response. Pretty neat. Okay, that's that's all it does. Okay, so this is the this is the application we're going to be deploying. I'm just running it locally in my Spring Boot environment, which is running on port 80, uh, 8111. Okay. All right. Okay. So, what is the thing we want to do? So, um, our build pipeline is going to need to do things like run tests and so on. So. Um, in our case, we have a uh, uh, test, so we can just run our tests like so. Okay, so there you go. So you ran, ran your tests, and, um, and then we also, I believe, have, uh, uh, in, uh, <coughs> I think we have some, no. Okay, so this will run the uh, integration tests. So when we talk about integration tests, these are things that um, are hitting the network or a database or something like that. In this case, the integration tests are simply checking a file. It's not, uh, not that big of a deal, but it requires the starting up of the um, starting up of the, um, uh, the application itself before running them. The micro tests that I was running before don't um, don't do any sort of anything outside of memory. All right, so you notice that when you run the integration test, there's all sorts of nonsense here. Um, this is not great. What you want to do is make sure that you, your um, 
Uh, your build output should always be as clean and clutter-free as possible. Um, so let's see. So we are going to. Um, <coughs> Okay. So normally I would, you know, we would clean that up and actually I'm not even going to include the integration test as part of the pipeline because um, it is, uh, the, those, those, uh, those tests take a while to run and we just want to kind of get through it quickly. So, all right. So all of this code, by the way, is going to be is checked in in this uh, project on GitHub. It's under this, um, uh, this tag, Agile, or this branch, Agile TO 2017. All right. So, <coughs> excuse me. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, we can take a look at our, our Jenkins. So let's see, we have our, this is our Jenkins that's not running. So what we can do is a Jenkins start. It was running a minute ago. Should probably get a Nexus start too, just in case. It's not running, it's already running. Okay. All right, so here's our Jenkins. Okay, so, um, when I talked about uh, making sure that you can version everything, we want to uh, really be sure that we are doing that. And uh, the very first thing that we want to make sure we're versioning is actually our Jenkins configurations themselves. So um, what we have here is we're using the uh, Jenkins job DSL plugin. And um, what that lets you do is when you set up, you can set up a job like this, and basically what it does is it checks out a repository. In this case, I'm using the, um, oops, I don't want to use Agile DC. That would not be good. Um, this will let you check out a uh, repository, um, uh, and then and then execute any sort of scripts that are in there. So in this case, it's going to run these job slash Ruby scripts. Okay, and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, uh, so in here. Yeah, pipeline job dot Ruby, and basically what this does is when we run it, it should create a uh, pipeline job, uh, or sorry, a pipeline job called pipeline demo. It's going to have this description, um, and it's going to say it should check out, uh, it should execute. A, the pipeline script itself is located in this other location. There's a couple levels of redirection, which is a little, just a little wonky, but that's just the way that this uh, plugin works. So, um, all right. So basically, what happens? It will make sense here in a second once we build this run this job here, and then it fails. Demos, OK, let's see. Uh, right. Oh, maybe I haven't committed this. Uh, that could very well be. No? I see. All right, so. I don't like to debug during demos, but we're unfortunately going to have to. If this doesn't work, then it's going to be really hard to figure out. Um, do I have the right uh, repository? Uh, configure Agile TO 17. Agile TO 2017. Ah, that'll do it. Okay. All right, so we build that. Okay, so it built successfully. Um, it's showing yellow just because it was recently failed. Okay, and so you can see when it when it ran that, it actually generated this other job. Okay, so uh, essentially you'll have these you can have these scripts that will generate any number of jobs in your pipeline. So um, this job now has been configured, um, and you can see that it's got that same description that was in that file. Um, the log rotation is set up the same, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then this is actually going to What's going, to, what's going to happen when you actually execute this job is it's going to pull in this other pipeline. So it'll pull in this um, pipeline Jenkins file job. And I'll show you where that is. That is just right here. OK. All right, so it's this guy here. OK, and this won't really do anything right now because it's, it's empty. So it's an empty, empty pipeline. OK. All right, so what is the first thing we're going to do? We are going to add a... Um, we're going to add a uh, uh, stages here. So we're going to add the, um, the first stage, which is pull. Um, and, oops. There we go. Oops. OK. So, so this first stage is simply going to pull the code. Um, and um, 
that also should probably use the right one here. So the correct branch. So if we write that, and now we were to execute this job, it should execute, um, hopefully without errors. And did not. I think I probably have the same problem here. It's probably pulling the wrong. Um, it's probably pulling the wrong branch. No, no, that's the right one. Unless I called it differently here, which is possible. Oh, I haven't committed it, so. And get pull stage. No, oh, there is no push. No, there is push. Okay. All right, uh, let's see. Okay, so we'll build that. All right, so you can see it built and it pulled the code. So um, if we were to look at the console output, we'd see that basically all it did is it uh, did a, in the end, it you know, runs a bunch of other commands, but then it runs a git checkout. Um, so that's it. That's all, all it's done so far. Uh, very good. All right, so what's our next stage that we want to run? We would like to run our micro tests. So um, if we were, go back into our pipeline, and then we can add the micro test stage. Okay. Uh, and this one, this all we have to do here is just run Gradle W, te Gradle w tests. So same thing I did it from the command line. Um. Okay. It's checking out locally, so I actually don't even need to push it. It should just work. Okay. So now it's executing the micro tests, and it should succeed. Okay, there it is. Very good. All right, so then, uh, whoops. All right, so then next thing we want to do, we're just going to skip the integration tests. Um, we can add a, um, we can add a little stage here called um, uh, uh, JUnit like this, and this will actually record the um, JUnit results um, when it runs those tests. This will this will log those reports. I don't think it'll actually do anything right now. Um, it has to have like it has to run a couple times before it actually generates the reports. So, no oh, failure. So we check our check our failures, and okay, did our tests run? Huh. Okay. Let's see, let's clean this out. Oh, you know what we haven't done? We haven't done a, uh, a clean stage, which I don't know if I normally need. Normally you can, um, you can add a uh, uh, clean stage, but I think it's, it's failing because it, does not li it doesn't like, there's an old set of tests that are in there. So um, yeah, so we can add, into this guy, um, we can add another stage where, and this is typ typically you'll want to do something like this. You want to always start with kind of a clean working environment. So um, this one, this command here will uh, clean everything out. Okay. Okay. And. So we should get a oh another failure. Oh, I'm on stage section. Okay. I have to add steps. Sorry, some of this stuff has changed since the last time I used it. Okay. Uh, that didn't work. Okay. All right. I'll try that again. All right. Okay, so there you go. Now it added the clean stage, so that'll just you know wipe out that wipe out the directory, and there you go. Now it ran um, successfully. If we build it again, we should now get um, those JUnit reports. So 
Yeah, so now you can see this test result trend. Right now it's going to stay the same because we're not adding any, more, any new tests, so it'll just stay at one. Okay. All right, so that is that. And then, um, okay, so the next step we, we need to do is make sure that we build a, um, we need to build, uh, build a uh, uh, artifact. So in this case, it's going to be a jar file. Okay so, okay, so if we have this guy, we're going to add a new stage here. And that is going to be like so. Um, and this is going to be the assemble command. Basically, this, is, this will just create a jar file. So if you do, uh, dot, uh, where is it? W assemble. Um, and then if we were to look into, or if we do a tree build, um, you can see it created this guy right here. Okay, so that's the demo service jar that we're going to use. Okay. So. Added uh, symbol. Okay. All right, so it's going to create the artifact. That should be reasonably quick. Okay. So that's created. And then our next step is going to be um, all right, so we want to make sure that we always have a um, unique version number for every build. So if you saw it over here, um, this pipeline demo service jar that we created was not unique. So um, one way that we can fix that is if we, were, if we run this um, uh, assemble command and pass it in something like this, um, uh, version equals something like that. And then if we were to look at our build again, we can see that it creates it with a, uh, a version, okay? So the way we're gonna simulate this in Jenkins, and there's like a lot of different ways for coming up with version numbering, and this is, you know, this is not by any means like semantic versioning or a talk about semantic versioning or anything. So we're just gonna keep it simple in this case. And all we're gonna do is um, specify, whoops, that's not it. Um, we're just gonna specify that our release version should just be 1.0 point whatever the build number is. So in this case, uh, the build number, the Jenkins build number, is the next one will be 10. So our build, our build number for our unique artifact is going to be 1.0.10. Okay, so that's how that's how that's going to work. And then, um, whenever we're doing these Jenkins commands like this assemble, we need to make sure we pass in that um, that variable. Uh, make sure I did that right. Yeah. Okay. All right. So essentially, we're running this exact same command that we just ran on the command line. Um, Um, version number. Okay, and if we build this now, it should do the same thing. But uh, you can watch the watch it running. So you can see here it ran and it used it passed in the version of p.1.0. Uh, or version of 1.0.10. Okay. So that is going to that's just going to keep incrementing as we do this. All right. So, oops, that's not what I wanted. All right, so um, one other thing that we can do usually at this point, sometimes what I'll do is I'll add a tagging step where you can, you know, you can actually tag the Git repository with that same version. Uh, I'm not going to run that right now, but um, that is another option. Um, but then really the, the uh, next kind of important thing is what we want to do is, is uh, do the publishing to Nexus. So we're going to take, here's the password, admin123 for Nexus in case you want to break into my local host. All right, so... Um, what we're going to do is uh, add in this publish step. And what that's going to do, whoops. Okay. Ooh, one more. Okay. Um, so this publish step is going to be, it's essentially just going to run this publish command. Um, that is in our, our build script. And if we take a look at our build script here, so this is our Gradle, um, Gradle build script. Um, there's really nothing super exciting going on in here. I just have this little section here that deals with the publishing. Um, and this is all pretty standard, just like, you know, you look up how to publish with Gradle, and this is what it tells you to do. So it's nothing, nothing magical here. Okay. 
So this just pub this will just publish this thing to Nexus. So we got to commit this. Uh, added publishing block. Okay, and then in our Jenkins file, added publishing step. Okay, so now, so you can uh, actually first I will look at. Um, all right, so in here, this is Nexus. You can see uh, under releases, this is where you would see our releases. Right now, there are no releases. Okay, so when we build this, um, oh, we already committed, right? Yeah. Okay. So if we were to build this now, we should get one additional step. Did I not click it? I did not click it. Okay. So I have to create and then publish. Okay. All right. So it published the artifact. So it, presumably it should show up in Nexus now. Okay. So here we are. If we refresh, there it is. Okay. So there's our pipeline demo service is uh, 1.0.11. So now we know for a given. Um, uh, version of our code, and if we had tagged the Git repository, we'd be able to easily tie these two things together. So we have um, this jar developed, this jar built from a specific version of the code, and if we were to build it again, um, you'd see that uh, one one zero twelve would also be in the repository. So now we can take that same same artifact and deploy it in any environment that we want. Uh, one thing that we definitely don't want to be doing is building a new for every environment. So uh, we want to make sure that. Every environment this gets deployed to, it's exactly the same same um, artifact. Okay. All right. So here you go. So here's 1.0.11 and 1.0.12 now. Okay. All right. So the other thing that we would also do is, uh, which I'm not going to do right now, is set up a trigger also so that the Jenkins job would kick off automatically every time you uh, commit something. So that's kind of a obvious, obviously needed step if you want to do this in an automated way. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to do is. Um, Take a look at uh, PCF. So we have um, Pivotal Cloud Foundry, um, which is right here. Okay, and um, this is basically what's going to happen is when we do deployments, they're going to show up in this list under um, applications, and then um, under routes, it'll say what the URL for that application is. Okay. All right. So we are going to start by taking a um, Deployment here, and I will explain what all this means. Um, okay, all right. So we have a deploy, and basically this is just running a um, uh, a series of command lines. Is that too small if I do that? Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, and so, so this first one is simply just logging into uh, our local PCF environment. If you were deploying this to the actual, you know. Uh, cloud-based PCF, then you would just simply change the URL. Um, you do a CF push that actually just pushes a given jar file um, to, the, to, the, uh, um, to, the, to PCF, and then you do a, a map route. So you can say, I want um, pipeline demo service A um, to be mapped, or, or sorry, the pipeline, pipeline demo service A application, which is what we're deploying, um, and I want the host name for that to be pipeline demo service. Okay, so. Let's run that. Oops. Um. All right. So now, if we build this, our pipeline is getting longer. <coughs> Okay, so here's the deploy stage. It's not doing anything crazy. All right, good. So it's still deploying. It does a whole bunch of stuff when it deploys. So. 
Okay, so it's starting up the starting up the application and it's a success. Okay, so let's take a look over here now. If we refresh this, we should see a deployed application. So there's uh, pipeline demo service A, and if you look on routes, you can see that it is um, the application uh, is called pipeline demo service dot local, and it's bound to this pipeline demo service A. Okay, so we can take a look at our deployed application, and you can see that. Um, this is now the URL of the of the PCF instance. Uh, slash CD will give us our deployed application. Okay. All right. Sweet. Um, all right. So good. So any uh, next thing we want to do is um, we're going to do a little bit of one one slide here. All right. So our next thing we want to do is uh, think about failover. So you deploy your production production app, but you want to make sure that it's actually working. Um, and if you, if, you, if you have a failing build, you don't want to deploy something, and then all of a sudden, now all of your instances are down. So um, the way that we're going to do that is we're going to actually deploy two, di two different instances. So we'll have an app A and an app B, and our route is going to point to both of those, so it'll load balance between them. And then, oh, whoops. There we go. It'll load balance between them, and then in the case where uh, if, we, if we go ahead and if we try and deploy to app A, um, the first thing we'll do is we'll actually change app.com to point to app B. Okay, so it's only pointing at app B, so all traffic is getting routed to that B instance. Then we'll try to deploy app A. Okay, so, um, so that one, no one will be pointing to it. We'll try to deploy to that. We'll then make sure that that uh, app A is actually working. And then we'll uh, add the route back to point to both of them. And then we'll do the same thing for app B. That's the, that's the approach we take for that. Does that make sense? Okay. Because the key is not having production downtime and uh, not, uh, not destroying stuff. And if you're, if you're committing multiple, multiple times a day, you want to make sure that you're able to um, do that without disrupting, disrupting users. Okay. So before the push, oops. Um, Okay, so in here, what we want to do after we after we log in, um, we want to do this. And what this is saying is it's going to unmap the, um, the the route. Oh, actually, sorry. First of all, we need to deploy to B. We haven't deployed B yet. Okay. Okay. So this is for deploy B. We want to log in. All that's the same, um, and then we want to push to B, and we're going to push the same version of out there, um, and then we're going to route B to the same thing. So let's actually just do that first. Um, uh, okay, so we'll just copy that out for right now. It's always good to test things in small stages, um, and uh, B deploy. Okay, so there we go. All right, so let's run that. And then we should get a deploy A and B. Except, or we should get a error. Looks like I've lost a end line or something, or a bracket somewhere. Uh, right here. Oh, there we go. Lost a bracket. Typo. Okay. I guess everyone knows I'm going to India now. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and I like sailing. Okay. All right. So we had another failure. Let's see what happened here this time. Uh, deploy B skipped. Uh, ch -ch -ch. What failed? Oh, no such failed directory. Oh, that it apparently is running that command. I guess that's not how you comment things out. Okay. I'm not a Groovy master, so I guess I don't know how you comment in Groovy. Okay, let's try that again. All right. 
Oops. All right. Try that again. Okay, we'll just watch the uh, run here. So here we go. It's deploying A, and you can see it's deploying. Um, it's doing that push with now this new version of point oh sixteen. So it's, this is still A. And here goes B, so it's deploying B now. You can watch it here. So here's uh, demo A is running. B, it, it reports it has crashed when it's not started. And it seems like it should have a better status reporting than that, but um, it's not really crashed. Okay. Um, okay, you can see our route B has been created. So there's uh, there's B, and there one is bound to um, A, and then the B one is bound to B. Okay, so that's finished successfully, and if we look at this, now we see both of them are running. We can load our application, and well, I guess there's really no way for me to prove that this is hitting each one. It actually is. I should probably add that to the script so it, we can make it easier to tell. Actually, we might be able to do this. No, okay. All right. Okay, so there it is. So it's deployed, uh, deployed both of those. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is now, um, well, we have a terrible URL, right? So we have, our URL is currently, um, Pipeline demo service. Oh no, we did we did add that already. So we have, uh, um, yeah, that's right. So we have the we have both we have this route here, pipeline demo service, which is pointing to both A and B. Okay, so A is uh, we could we could go to A if we wanted. So this one exists, um, pipeline demo service dash A like that or B. Um, but we want everybody to go to this this one. Okay, so that's both A and B. All right, so. Now we're going to do the thing that we were trying to do before, which is, oops, sorry. I won't take a phone call right now. Thank you. All right. Um, all right. So, so we take a look in this guy. And now we want to do this. Um, okay. So um, after the login, oops. We want to do. We're going to unmap the the um, uh, pipeline A, um, the the A route from from the uh, host service. So essentially, what that will do is just remove this binding, okay, that first binding, and then we will take. Um, this guy, and add it. Oops. After, okay, and you just have to trust me that does does the right thing. But basically, all this is doing is doing a curl um, against the um, health check endpoint of this of this service. So against pipeline demo service A. So it just executes this command. Um, and if you look at this guy here, you'll see we can do slash health, and that'll tell us whether or not the service is up or down. Okay, and there's a little. It's it's a fairly small bit of code that just tests something to see if it's see if it's awake, or see if it's up. It's actually check, checking to see if there's a file in existence. The file that has the um, has this stuff in it. Okay. All right. So that looks like it is hopefully going to work. So basically, we're going to. So the step the first step is to do this to, um, unmap, then um, and then uh, check to make sure it's okay. And if it's uh, okay. Then remap the route in this line. Okay, that's those are the steps. Um, great. Uh, uh, what's a good name for this? Uh, failover. Part one. Ah, well, that'll have to do for now. Okay. So let's see. Whoops. Go in here. Okay, we'll build that again. Oh, everything's getting pushed down because it's our pipeline is getting too long for this. 
uh, this monitor. So. <coughs> All right. Unfortunately, these deploys take a little bit long, so this is probably going to be the last uh, commit where we have about five minutes left. Okay, so so it's deploying to A, and <coughs> and we can see actually if we were to look at this guy. In the, if we caught it at the right time. So you can see that, that um, route A has been removed because it's in that part of the, the, um, the build. And OK, now it's doing deploy B. So it made it to deploy B, so that means that that route should be back now. OK, so the route B is back. And it's just this one's not up yet, so that's why that's happening. Um, it's reporting it down. Um, OK, so, that, so that, that is happening. And now we can, we can simulate a failure, um, like if we were to commit a um, I mean, so this is the this is the data. That's what's there. So we could do like a, um, data the JSON to uh, wrong file JSON or something like that. Um, moved file to the wrong place. Okay, and if we now uh, do another build. What we would expect to happen is that this deploy A um, doesn't work. And uh, as a result, our app is still running. That's what we would see. But our app would only be running on B now. Okay. And of course, you can grow these things to be more sophisticated as far as what the monitoring is and you know how it's, how it's doing its stuff. So this is a fairly straightforward way of doing it. Um, so overall, so I mean, uh, assuming that this, this works, um, well, let's just, uh, before I give my summary, I will uh, we'll just make sure it works. Okay, so this should be, it should have removed, again, the route. So you can see the route is gone right now. And this should be failing any second. Assuming my health, there we go. So there's the health check failed, um, and we can go over here. So uh, if we, so this is our pipeline demo service is still working, and if we go to uh, dash B, that's the one that's actually working. So that works, and if we go to A, that one is failing. Okay, and we can take a look at the health check for that, and it says status down. Um, because that file is in the wrong spot. Okay, but our application, meanwhile, is still up and running. So, um, so that's it. Then we would, you know, we'd make the change to fix that, uh, put the file in the right spot, commit it, and then everything would come back up. That would be how it would work. And then you can add something else if you want for like, um, uh, oops. Um, you could add more, add more stages to do, you know, more sophisticated rollbacks and things like that if you needed. But. Um, Really, in summary, what I wanted to really just say about this is that you know continuous deployment pipelines—they're not that difficult from a technical perspective. They're you know it's just a bunch of command lines essentially that you're running. They're very straightforward. So if you're trying to do continuous deployment in your organization, don't let the technical bit of it you know scare you away. That's the easy part. The hard part is getting a culture around testing, a culture around you know uh, rapid feedback from customers, incremental things, uh, doing feature toggles, all those kinds of things, and other te types of technical practices are much more difficult than actually just setting up a pipeline. This part is pretty straightforward. And um, that's all I have. So I'm ready my time. So thank you for attending. If you have any questions or anything like that, I'll be around. Um, you're welcome to come and ask. <laughs>